Hello everyone and welcome to our tutorial video. My name is Josh Taylor. I'm an engineer that works here in Bentley's design and simulation group. And among my duties here at Bentley is to communicate the best practices of some of our software, specifically our structural software. And the topic here today is going to be shear wall design in RAM structural system. And the focus here today is not going to be so much on the dialogues or the menus or specific how-tos within the software, but it's going to be more focused on the design process as a whole. Um, in other words, how do you move through the software in essentially the same way that you would carry out the design if you weren't using software at all, okay? A couple of points before we begin. First of all, our audience um, extends around the world, and it's therefore difficult to select any one set of standards uh, such as building code, design code, units, um, that everyone's going to be completely familiar with. So in this video what I've done is so, sort of a compromise, so hopefully there's something that everybody's somewhat familiar with. Um, I'm using uh, metric units and uh, US design codes, so IBC, uh, ACI are the design codes. Okay. So we're going to start completely from scratch in this session and go ahead and create a new model. We very well could have just started with the, the design in RAM Concrete, but we're going to take the chance here for those of you that might not be familiar with the system to go ahead and go through the modeling and the analysis first as well. And we're going to use three modules that, that you see highlighted in red there. Do the modeling and then to do the analysis in RAM Frame and then go to RAM Concrete to do the, the concrete shear wall design. So the first thing I'm going to do here is create a simple grid to help me lay out the walls here. And another thing about the model that we're building is that I'm only going to create the wall stack that we're going to do the design on. Of course, ordinarily in RAM you would model the complete building, the floor slabs and foundations and everything. We're just going to model a single wall stack to keep it simple. And then I'll just apply some static seismic loads to the wall stack to kind of get that inverted triangular pattern distribution pattern for seismic loads and we'll apply some line line gravity loads at each level to represent the tributary floor loads on each at, on the walls at each level so i've created one floor layout which is all we need the wall is going to be the same length at each level and we're going to have the same loads applied and I'm making a five-story wall stack out of this. And we're going to put some openings in here to create some interesting conditions so that we can design some coupling beams as well and do both pier and wall header design. I'm going to choose some dimensions here and add the walls, uh, the wall openings. I'm going to try to center these a little bit better here on each wall panel. So let me adjust the X offset. Actually I'll put one on each side of the wall panel so that we can have um, three different piers there uh, at each level. And I want to create a little bit of non-uniformity here. I don't want to create a perfect wall stack, uh, one that's purely academic. We want to create a realistic design scenario here. So let me change the, let me bump over this wall this wall opening a little bit so that it's not perfectly aligned with those above it. And let me change some sizes here of the of the openings above at each of the stories above here. We'll make these openings a little bit taller so that we get a, a truer uh, coupling beam behavior here in between each opening at each level. So I'm just using the revise command here on the wall opening to change the dimensions of each of the openings. Okay. Let's just go ahead and leave it like that. And now let's create the stat static seismic loads. And I'm going to apply these as nodal loads directly here on RAM Modeler. Now of course in RAM frame you have auto load generators, both 
seismic and wind. So you can very well automatically apply uh, the lateral loads according to building specific building code and ramp frame. But I'm going to explicitly specify some load magnitudes here and apply them at each of the stories. I'm just going to take a total guess at each of the magnitudes here and then later on uh, when we do the analysis we can check the deflections and and some of the forces in the walls and just just to make sure that we have something a representative structure that's fairly realistic. So I want to apply these to get that um, inverted triangular pattern um, and I created load magnitudes of 800, 600, 400, and 200 kilonewtons. Let me apply 600 at the top at the roof and then 800 at level 5 and 600, 400, 200 going down. Again, no floor slabs, no diaphragms, we're just applying the lateral loads and the gravity loads directly to the wall stack. So now we'll create some line loads with a dead load and a live load magnitude and some mass as well. We don't necessarily need the mass since this is static, but we can go ahead and specify some at any rate just to demonstrate. So we're assuming about a maybe a three meter tributary width. Maybe a three KPA a live load. And um, I just realized that dead load magnitude I input does not reflect the slab self weight that would be there. So let me change that. Put something a little heavier to represent slab dead load as well. Change that. I'll just add that line load, apply that line load and plan to the wall there. So there it is. And that's been laid out at each level since it's a typical level. And we're done with the modeling. So we're ready to go on to frame now. The first thing I want to do here in RAM frame is check some of the general criteria to make sure that the analytical settings are make sense, um, such as the mesh node spacing, maximum spacing between nodes, um, meter and a half, that looks reasonable for what we're doing. I'll turn off the P delta to simplify things. Uh, we have no diaphragms because we have no floor slabs, so that's simple. There's nothing there to fill in. Uh, load cases, everything has come in automatically from what we've modeled, both the gravity and the seismic nodal load, so those are already there for us. We can review the masses here under the, the diaphragm masses dialog. And um, this is definitely something where you'll want to kind of compare against a hand check to make sure that the weight, the mass being considered in the frame analysis compares with what was modeled. Okay, so let's run the analysis really quickly here. Always a good idea right off the bat to check uh, the mesh, how that looks, the analytical mesh, and to see if that's going to, first of all, if the, if the refinement is good enough, and second, if any of the sections that you'll likely draw across the piers uh, or the headers um, are going to create any kind of um, numerical um, problems in integrating those stresses to get the forces. So here we can review the story shears at each level and you can see that they agree with what we applied so we look good there. That's always a first good check in reviewing the uh, accuracy of the analysis. Just a reality check. Here's a qualitative deflected shape color coded under the dead load and the seismic uh, lateral loads. You can see that uh, the, the, the amount of deflection obviously as seen on screen varies with the scale factor but that looked like an awful lot there um, regardless so let me do this let me assign a frame number to all these walls and that's going to allow us to drill a little more closely into some results. Um, I do have to run the analysis once more after I do that. But now let me look at the store, the nodal displacements at each level, and those are reported by frame, by frame number. Okay, and if I look at this and I do a difference on the displacements at level 5 and level 6, 
I get a story drift ratio um, upwards of two and a half times the what's generally allowed by code. And um, this is just kind of a you know a tutorial video that we're going through, so it, it's not necessarily critical that we adhere to that. But we do like to demonstrate realistic structures. And anytime we see something that's that's that far off, it's I like to go back and reproportion re things to be a little more realistic. So what I'm going to do in an attempt to bring down the deflection and the drift at each level is bump up the concrete strength and uh, the thickness of the walls. Go back into Modeler to do that. And now I'm just going to reanalyze here in frame. Okay, so that's done. And I can go back to the nodal displacements report here. And if we do another difference on those, we can still we can see that the story drift is still pretty high. We have brought it down a little bit, uh, but we've gone through the exercise in showing how that's done. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it here for now and continue the demonstration uh, with what we have here. So frame runs in the two different modes, the load cases and the load combinations. And I can also go to the shear wall, wall forces module, which is used specifically to investigate section forces at specific locations in the wall. You can draw line seg segments essentially anywhere you want, and you're most likely going to draw them at points of where you think the design is going to be critical, and you can retrieve the, the section force for all the load cases or the load combinations um, at that location. So this is really where you want to start. You don't want to dive right into the design. You really want to get a feel for how the structure is behaving where the forces are flowing through the wall. This wall stack is not too difficult. Uh, it's fairly intuitive, obviously, but if you have something more complex um, where you're not certain where the forces are going to concentrate, certainly this is a tool you want to start with to, get, to kind of get a feel uh, for how the forces are flowing through that wall stack. So this is what's really useful is using this in load combination mode because ultimately that's what we're designing for, load combinations and um, you can turn that on and again retrieve the combined forces, design forces at each of these sections. You can do it for shear, moment, axial, uh, whichever you want. Okay, so certainly we could go farther with that if we wanted farther with our investigation and ramp frame uh, into how things are behaving. Once we get sufficiently comfortable with it, then we can move on to the design module. And um, the way I'm going to handle this is certainly not to just dive right in and let the program auto-optimize things for us. Instead, what I want to do is use the program's design capabilities really in the most primitive way I can uh, to just kind of control the complexity. That's really the key here. The design of wall systems are very complex. There's a lot of different things going on. I want to keep things simple initially. First of all, to get a better understanding of what code provisions are controlling, um, where the wall needs to be stronger, um, but also just to control the complexity um, and get a feel for what the program is doing and why it's making the decisions it is. Okay. So to do this and to facilitate this approach, my bar pattern template that I'm going to create with to start with is going to be very simple. I'm just going to use number five bars only in both the horizontal and vertical directions. And what I want to do is I want to use kind of a wide range of spacings uh, from the maximum spacing to the down to the minimum spacing we'll consider with a very small increment in the spacing as we go. Okay, so that way I'll get a little more filtered idea of how the things change as we go down the wall and the requirements for strength are greater down at the bottom and how that changes as we go down. So let me select the load combinations I'm going to use here, just IBC. And 
if we had a huge number of load cases and there were maybe hundreds of load combinations, this would certainly be another area where we would want to simplify right off the bat. We would want to just check a couple load combinations that we suspect would be critical. Let's not get bogged down in long run times initially. Uh, let's just keep things simple and see what the, the worst case controlling cases are right off the bat. Um, just to make sure that there's no radical changes in geometry that are needed. Um, you know, maybe I need another 10 feet, 3 meters worth of wall. Maybe I need to double the thickness of the wall. We don't want to spend a lot of time in the small details if we don't even know the answer to those big picture questions yet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is lay down uh, some sections manually, just like I did in RAM frame and where I suspect the design is going to be critical and I'm just going to run the design straight away only looking at these sections just to get a feel for for how things stand and looking at the section the sections I laid out sections 2 3 and 4 probably should be a story higher and 5 6 and 7 should also probably be a story higher as well because that would correspond to the fact that we're splicing every two stories from the bottom at any rate here's our bar layouts and you can see that we definitely have some problems at the lower two levels. Uh, we're maxed out. We've used the tightest spacing we can and we're still failing. Another thing to note is, is the panels where there are no sections drawn uh, won't have any design results obviously and it'll just default to the, to the lightest steel bar pattern uh, within the template. So let's click on the sections here and investigate a little bit as to what's going on and where the problems lie. Section 1H1, uh, you can see we're way over capacity here, over utilization ratio, uh, over 3, in fact, uh, for axial flexural design. And there's the controlling load combo, and if I go over to the interaction surface itself, I can see that it's the section is in tension, and that's really where the problem lies, is there's just too much net tension on this section. Um, in reality, we probably have more dead load than we than I applied, uh, so that'd be helping us quite a bit. But uh, but you can see that that's that's what the problem is here, uh, and the warnings reflect this as well. Uh, we don't see any design warnings for shear, uh, so that's good. We at least uh, the the design at least works for that condition, and there's the capacity and the demand there. You can verify that we're okay. And we probably have some similar things going on in these other sections. Uh, section 8 here, again, way over. Uh, two, uh, interaction ratio of 2.5, 2.9. So um, uh, if nothing else, we've kind of found kind of where we stand uh, in comparison to the sort of default um, moderate reinforcing patterns we ideally would choose um, if we, and use if we could. Okay, here's a section where flexure um, is way over. <clears throat> okay, so we get have an idea of where we stand there. The sections higher up are okay. They're passing. I select one of these. Um, you know, about 80% here utilization. There's the shear. We're okay for shear. About 60% utilization here. So, um, and the higher stories are okay. Okay, so we definitely know now where we need to improve. So let's go ahead and take another level of refinement in the bar pattern assignment. And let's allow the vertical bar size to vary now, uh, in addition to the spacing, so that we can see what kind of bar sizes are needed down there uh, at the bottom levels where they're failing pretty badly right now. And this isn't the only way, this is just one of many ways you can proceed um, this is just kind of the way that uh, makes sense to me here um, as I'm working. Uh, but again, there's a number of different ways to go. We didn't have any shear failures on the sections, so let's go ahead and leave the horizontal bar at number fives. Um, we'll go ahead and use that uh, all the way up and down the wall for the horizontal bars to keep it simple. But let's go ahead and allow the maximum bar size to be a number nine instead of keeping it constant at number five. Okay, and I'll just call this design trial one. I'll just give the the bar pattern that name. And I'll add this to the list rather than change the other one so that we can go back and um, review other designs if we want to at some point. Okay. 
Okay, the design is done, <clears throat> and this time all the sections are green, so uh, number 9 bar was enough. Uh, you can see at the bottom there, number 9's at 10, I'm sorry, 100 millimeters, uh, about 4 inches vertical. Uh, they're needed both at the second and um, at basically the, the bottom two stories. But uh, we've at least enveloped it here. We know number 9's uh, can work. We can select one of the sections here and see uh, how close we are. This critical section here that we, that we looked at before, uh, 0.961 on axial flexural interaction. So uh, right at it, we're right at the edge there. Um, actually, we, we might want to upsize it a little bit more to give us a little more wiggle room if things change. Uh, if the design loads get higher or that opening wants to move, uh, it might give us a little more wiggle room, but we're pretty much right at uh, capacity as it stands right now. Of course we can click through these other sections and uh, get a sense of where we stand on, on those as well. Load combo 7 seems to be the controlling uh, combo in all these cases here. Okay, Just one other thing uh, to show here, another thing you can use to, to gauge the understanding of the structure is that in the concrete shear wall module you can review stress contours as well. Okay, um, you cannot do this in RAM frame currently. It's a capability we want to put in there. Um, it certainly is needed in there, but for the time being, um, you can do it directly within the shear wall module. And this is very handy in that it identifies where we might want to investigate other locations in the wall. So in other words, you can superimpose the design sections uh, as you see on there. And uh, you can see that there's some concentrations here at level three at the top of the uh, the opening where I might want to add another section. Uh, there's an awful lot of red in that region. Uh, so just another um, another guide and, and kind of assessing the behavior of the wall here uh, as you work through the design. So we're getting a pretty good understanding of how the axial flexural interaction design um, needs to work in order for us to have a reasonable reinforcing layout here and get a design that works. But what about the, the headers there? Um, so let's investigate those now. And what I want to do is instead of adding uh, to what we've already done, I kind of want to start clean and place some sections over the headers. And just again, look at these in isolation for now. Again, controlling complexity here. Um, and what you're going to see, I'm actually going to show you how there's a better way to look at these wall headers than simply drawing sections. Okay, so I'm just going to run the design with these vertical sections um, in the header regions, the coupling beam regions, uh, whatever it is you want to call them. I'm going to go ahead and run the design. And again, the bar patterns will be selected based solely on the requirements of these vertical sections now. Okay, And what you can see is that these sections are split up at the story levels. Okay, So I have one check, one unique section uh, that spans from the top of the opening here up to the story level. And then the one above is a separate check. Okay, so we're splitting them up into two checks, and one of these you're going to see that's colored red uh, fails as over capacity, and the other one passes. But in reality, these are going to behave as one integral section. Obviously, we don't. We'd rather not split these up, um, especially when they don't work like this, because it's actually uh, um, not quite the correct approach. But uh, we overcome that by using uh, a coupling beam feature within the module, and that's what we're going to do here. Okay, so this is the part where we kind of put it all together. Um, we lay out the horizontal sections using the automation tool, and we delete some of the ones that we're not necessarily going to need, but kind of top and bottom of each wall pier should be sufficient. Um, at least in the early going of our design. And then I'm going to use the coupling beam specific feature to go ahead and fence uh, some coupling beams and place them in the wall stack here. <clears throat> okay, so those are replacing the vertical sections that we used as the basis of the design before. And each of these yellow area elements that you see there are coupling beam entities um, that have a lot of intelligence built directly into them that we can query. Okay, so this is sort of an ideal layout um, in terms of getting a design and setting up 
your sections and your coupling beams and arriving at a design for this wall stack. So you can see from the view update there that um, the design actually passes. So uh, based on the new bar pattern that we used and the coupling beams that we laid out, we get all green. Um, I'm going to actually change the coupling beam criteria to use a uniform reinforcing layout rather than top and bottom bars, which is what I had done before. And this is also going to require a little more iteration a little later on to make sure that uh, if, if we want to use a truly patterned uh, bar layout over the whole wall panel, we'll want to use the same reinforcing uh, within the coupling beam region that we use in the wall panels. Okay, so we might have to investigate that a little bit further. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and keep looking at this. Uh, you can see that uh, the coupling beam bars that we used uh, do generate some failures. Uh, we have some red there. All the section cuts work. There's no issues there. Uh, number nine's at 100 millimeters at the first two levels, so that would work okay to run those bars up uh, two stories there. And we do have some differences there at the um, fourth and fifth levels. Uh, we go from number eight's vertical at 150, uh, and then we have a lighter requirement above that, number eight's at 350. Okay, so we have some reconciling to do there. And the top level, number five, is at 350, uh, and that's going to be um, just one lift of bars there, so, so no real issues there. Now let me get back to these coupling beams and get a feel for how far we are, how far off we, we are with those. Um, let me just go up to the little icon here, mouse selects member, and I'll select on one of these coupling beams colored in red to get an idea for of how far off we are. We're about 25% over on the shear strength, okay. Um, on this one we're about 37% over. Um, where it says failed there you can see um, and not quite as bad up here uh, at the higher level okay so I'm just gonna uh, leave that for now because I'm actually gonna take a little bit of a detour right now um, maybe not so much a detour but kinda of just essentially select a more realistic bar pattern because I kind of changed my mind now and I think that uh, 100 millimeters is probably a little too tight of a bar spacing to use and we might be able to reconcile some of these bar patterns a little bit better as well um, if we just consider two spacings uh, 300 millimeters and 150 okay so I'm going to change um, create another bar pattern that reflects this and I'll go a little higher on the allowed vertical bar size I'll take that up to number 10 um, because it did take number 10's, number 9's at 100 for the bottom to work there. So I'm going to go ahead and rerun the design uh, w with these new settings, with this new bar pattern assignment. Okay, so let's see. Uh, bottom two levels, verticals, number 10 at one, 10's at 150. Uh, we do have some failures down there, so if we wanted to stick with this, we're going to have to to work through that a little bit. Um, let me go ahead and change the uniform coupling beam bar criteria to reflect the 150 millimeter spacing as well, so that we can start to sync uh, the bar sizes and spacings um, in the coupling beam region with the wall panels. Okay. So we're definitely getting closer. Um, tens at 150 down at the bottom two levels. Uh, that's good. Tens at 300 above that, and then eights at at 150 above that. So that's going to have to get reconciled a little bit. Um, let's take a look and see what kind of failures we have on this this wall pier here. Uh, axial flexural interaction is actually okay. Uh, it's the shear that's the problem here. So uh, horizontal reinforcing no doubt will have to, to increase here. Um, let's go ahead and edit this template so that uh, remember we were still using number five bars only horizontal so it couldn't upsize it even though it needed to. So let's change that to a number eight and now we should be able to, alle to alleviate that problem 
that shear problem in that wall pier there because it'll be able to select a larger bar, horizontal bar in that area. Okay, and there it is. Now we're we're okay there, and we're left with only one failure down on there at the bottom. Okay, and we can also start to think now about making some of these uh, bar layouts a little friendlier in terms of uh, running bars up uh, multiple stories and splicing. Okay, we're still okay at the bottom two levels because those are the same at the first two. Uh, the next two levels up, um, we have tens at 300 and then we go up to eights at 300. Okay, so we'll need to make a change there. It's just a matter of deciding what it is we want to do. So let's use a different feature now uh, to facilitate that. Let's assign a bar pattern directly, um, a bar pattern from directly within the template. Let's go ahead and make this level verticals number eights at 150, just like it is at the panel below, so that we can keep those bars uniform up at those two levels. Okay, and we're okay now. Those sections all pass and the blue coloring of the sections means that that reinforcing is frozen in other words it's user defined and it will no longer change uh, when we rerun the design in other words the program won't try to auto size it it'll stay with the bar pattern that we've selected and assigned there okay so we have one last section here um, to get working and you can see that there's still an awful lot, lot of tension on that section um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and freeze everything now. In other words, I'm, I'm satisfied for the most part with the design. I'm going to freeze everything. It's colored blue. Uh, so reruns, changes to criteria will no longer affect it. And I'm going to use the manual reinforcement command to strengthen this one portion of the wall panel down here um, to fulfill, to get enough strength to resist tension. Okay, rather than upsizing the entire panel, I'm just going to assign specific zones, reinforcing zones to this area where it fails. So in that specific area, which is uh, zone one, uh, in the dialog here, I'm going to use number 10s. Um, let's see, I'll, I'll stay number 10s at 150 there. And maybe I'll try using three layers instead of two. I'll see how that works. Um, we're not doing any boundaries here. Uh, there's no special seismic checks or anything in this example, so I'll just um, say don't check it. <clears throat> and I'm going to change this zone here to use three layers instead of two. Okay, so I've put my own name to that bar pattern. Just call it three layers. So I'm going to go ahead and run the design. Okay, and it works. So, we've got all the sections working. We have uh, laid out the bar so that it's going to be pretty easy to construct. We can run the bars up two levels. Um, there's our coupling beam reinforcing, uh, the same spacing as the uh, reinforcing in the wall piers. We might have a little more reconciling to do up here at the top, um, but that's another level of refinement that we can we can do. Um, but for the most part, the callouts and um, the placement of the bar is is done. We've essentially reached um, a level of design that we can now uh, put onto our drawings. Okay, And that's actually going to be the next step in this. But before we get to that, it might be nice to review some things um, that we could possibly print out, uh, put into our calculations, help us actually review the design. This is a, obviously a very simple design, um, but if it was a more complicated geometry, we'd want to have some tools um, to go back and audit our design. Okay, this is the wall, a summary of the wall panel reinforcing in each panel. Uh, it's sorted by story, and um, if we have s <clears throat> special zones like we do on the bottom level here that are split into separate zones, um, each, the reinforcing within each zone is reported there. Okay, like you can see here. Okay, so that's one report that we can use uh, to help review the design. Uh, of course, there's uh, the coupling beam design summary, which is a nice high-level look at how all the coupling beams fared. And anytime we have a design report like this,
We always report the controlling uh, code sections um, if there are any failures. Um, here you can see that we have the controlling uh, load combination and then we also report um, whether or not the, the reinforcing checks, the prescriptive checks per the code uh, passed or not. Okay, so let's go ahead and produce some uh, some CAD drawings from what we've done here. And one thing I do need to do is assign um, an elevation number to, to the wall stack here, which I did there, uh, just so that the CAD logic here that we're gonna see recognizes it and actually draws it. Okay, so this is the shear wall reinforcing drawing uh, output dialog here. You just uh, make sure that you have all the scale settings and, and standards the way you want. Uh, and then just go ahead and choose a name for the file. You can save it. And uh, make sure that the dialog says drawing is generated successfully. And what's, once they're, uh, they're created, you can just navigate to it. Open a, um, really any product that will open a CAD drawing. Um, I'm using Bentley Navigator here, but uh, select on the wall elevation. And there are our drawings. We have some coupling beams. Um, first of all, here's the, the elevated stack itself um, with the bar patterns called out where there's uniform bars and then um, the reinforcing over the, the multiple zones. Um, where we have the manual reinforcing. And then the coupling beams are labeled on elevation there and you're referenced to um, a coupling beam sketch, uh, more of a scheduled drawing for the coupling beam itself that denotes um, all the bars used um, to reinforce the, the headers there. So that completes this video demonstration. Thank you for watching and we look forward to doing many more of these. Thank you.